Good afternoon, everyone. Today I'd like to take a crack at this problem. Uh, it's a little more challenging uh, in regards to the fact that we have to use Newton's second law and third law together. Um, and it's rather wordy, but I think, I think we'll be able to figure out the correct answer to all the parts here. We are told what the weight of the hammerhead is here. We're also told that um, it's stopped. So perhaps if I kind of write these quantities off to the side here, um, since weight kind of points downward on a free body diagram, um, I'm going to draw this as a negative number with regards to the vertical direction, 4.9 Newton. Uh, if this is stopped, well, then that means that the final velocity has to be zero, and this is also in the y direction. We have an initial downward velocity of <clears throat> 3.2 meters per second. Uh, if we're saying that downwards is a negative direction, then that means that the initial velocity in the y is minus 3.2 meters per second. Um, the hammer is falling a vertical distance of 0 0.45 centimeters. So that would also mean that the final position, right, so maybe y sub f, that's going to be 0 as well. The initial position in the vertical direction is going to be 0 0.45 centimeters. And it's our job to convert that to meters, because centimeters is not a useful unit when um, doing these kind of manipulations. So if we have centimeters upstairs, we need to put centimeters downstairs in the de denominator in order for it to cancel out. We want the final unit to be meters, so that will be upstairs. We know that in one meter there are 100 centimeters, so we can cancel these out. And this will be the same as moving the decimal place over two spots to the left. So we'll have 0 0.0045 meters. Oop, that's a badly drawn 5. One second. There we go. 4 or 5 meters. OK, so uh, we also have the applied force, F applied, due to the person. This is going to be a negative 15 newtons. That's important to keep track of. And I think that is pretty much it. What might help is maybe drawing a picture of the situation. Uh, again, I am nothing even remotely close to a visual artist, but if I draw something that looks like maybe, I don't know, <laughs> a, a judge's gavel or some kind of a sledgehammer, um, that can represent our hammer that is falling downward. Um, if I kind of label the height here, that will be the initial y, and it's going to fall that 0 0.45 meters down to y final equals 0. And essentially, this is where our nail is embedded, okay. right at y is equal to 0. And that is pretty much it. Everything is labeled. Here's a very crudely drawn picture. Let's start by identifying the action forces, the forces that are exerted on the hammerhead and then we'll use that to draw the free body diagram with the remaining space uh, on this page here. So the first action force, I'll call this first action force, this was the first force that was basically given to us right at the beginning of the problem description. This is the weight, right? Or rather, since we're saying that the, the weight points in the, the negative direction, we'll say minus weight hammerhead. Okay, I'll use HH kind of 
as a representation of that. This represents the force of the earth pulling down on the hammerhead. Okay? That's the weight of the hammerhead. What is the corresponding reaction force? Corresponding reaction force. Well, if the earth is pulling down on the hammerhead, due to Newton's third law, there has to be an equal and opposite reaction there. And the reaction is that the hammerhead is exerting an upward force, H, H, on Earth. Okay? A positive reaction force to counter that weight due to the Earth pulling down on the hammerhead. So that's the first action force. There's a second one, too. Second action force. Which one is this, you may ask? It is the force of the nail pushing up on the hammerhead once it hits. Okay? And we're going to call this the N, capital N, for the normal exerted by the nail okay? on the hammerhead. This is going to be a positive value, so I'll write plus. So there should be a corresponding corresponding reaction force to this positive normal force exerted by the nail on the hammerhead that's negative. A negative force exerted by the hammerhead onto the nail. That is what we're looking for. Negative force exerted by the hammerhead on the nail. This is the corresponding reaction force, the corresponding negative force that balances out the positive force that the normal of the nail exerts on the hammerhead. Okay. There's one more, and this was mentioned in the second sentence of the problem description, and that is the force, the negative force that is applied by the person onto the hammerhead, by person Oops, person on hammerhead, right? That's that negative 15 downward force applied by the person using the hammer. So that means there has to be a corresponding reaction force to that too. All of these have had corresponding reaction force, or a, cor a corresponding reaction force, excuse me. So this one should have a corresponding reaction force too. And what would that be? What is a what is a, a reaction force to a negative applied force by a person onto the hammerhead? Well, there would be a positive force that would be basically the the, the hammerhead onto the person. Right? If this person is pushing on the hammer as they're uh, uh, swinging it downward to hit this nail, the hammer has to be pushing back on them, too. They are going to feel the resistance of the hammer as they swing down. They're just not going to effortlessly just push this hammer down onto the nail with zero resistance back onto their hand. So these are the three forces, right? And maybe I'll actually label these here. So uh, first action force second action force, third action force. And when we make our free body diagram, um, free body diagram of hammerhead, we are only considering the action forces that act on the hammerhead. And those are all the ones that I labeled one, two, and three. 
Okay, the rest do not go on the free body diagram. Those are just the reaction forces that we had to identify. We don't actually have to draw those, and you shouldn't. If I just draw the uh, hammerhead as a single dot, and I do, you know, the kind of coordinate system spiel that you've maybe seen in some of the other videos before, I have X here, I have Y here. I think exerting the weight by a negative purple arrow is perfectly fine. This is minus W. Ooh, it's in fat text. Give me one second here. Minus W. So the weight is 4.9 downward in magnitude. We have the uh, applied force that's 15 newtons in the downward direction. So that means the length of the arrow of the vector uh, should be three times as long. So maybe down here. Okay. And this is F minus F applied. Oops. Minus F applied. Fantastic. There we go. And that means that um, we have one left. The normal force of the nail onto the hammerhead. Maybe I'll use an orange arrow for that. And remember, this normal force has to not only balance the weight, but it also has to balance the applied force as well. So if you have minus 4.9 and minus 15, well then that means that the normal force of the nail, uh, let me actually move this up because it needs to be drawn fairly large. The, the vector representing the normal force of the nail needs to be pretty large as well. Right. Um, let's label that using this and nail. All right. So this is the free body diagram for part A. Part A is now done. I'll put a check mark on that one. We drew a free body diagram for the hammerhead. Bingo. We got the three forces, uh, the action forces drawn on there. Bingo. Uh, what else? We had to identify the reaction force to each action force in the diagram. Corresponding action force for the first one? Yep. Corresponding action force for the second one and the third one? Yep, yep, yep. Okay, that is all done. A, good to go. Let's move on to part B. Calculate the downward force exerted by the hammerhead on the nail while the hammerhead is in contact with the nail and moving downward. So let me open up a new sheet here. And I should have, yes, the part pasted. So we want to calculate, want to calculate the force exerted by the hammerhead on the nail. Okay? We want to calculate this quantity. We know it's downward, so it should be negative. How should we do that? Well, we can use Newton's second law here, which says that the sum of the forces on the hammerhead uh, is equal to the mass of the hammerhead times its net acceleration. And what is the sum of the forces on the hammerhead? Well, that comes uh, from the free body diagram. We've got an upward one, the normal force of the nail, and then the two downward ones, the weight of the hammerhead and the force that the person is applying on the hammer as they're swinging down. So let's kind of include that maybe in brackets here. So the sum would be this. Uh, I'm going to do N nail uh, minus W minus F applied. That is what the sum of F is equal to. Okay? And this is equal to M times A net. And now, here is where we need to make a very important substitution using Newton's third law. We talked about how the reaction force 
to the normal force exerted by the nail on the hammerhead is equal to the negative force or the minus the force of the hammerhead on the nail. Okay, we talked about that in part A. Now, well, that's convenient because this is exactly the same as that. So let's make this substitution in our previous expression here. I'm going to exchange the normal force of the nail with the negative the force of the hammerhead. And so our expression would look like this, minus force hammerhead. I'll just write it as that. Minus W minus F applied is equal to mass times the net acceleration. I would isolate for the force on the hammerhead and make sure it's positive because that's what we want to solve for. So I'm going to move this over onto the other side. Uh, in particular, if I kind of draw what I'm doing, I'm going to move this piece over here and I'm going to move this chunk over here. Okay? And so our expression will look like this. Minus mass times the net acceleration minus the weight minus the applied force Okay, all this negative stuff this is equal to the force exerted by the hammerhead onto the nail on nail and that's great because we actually know some of these quantities already we know the applied force we know the weight that was all given to us we actually know the mass because we can take 4.9 newtons and divide it by 9.8 meters per second squared and that gives us mass but we don't know the net acceleration however what we can do if I go back to the first page here there's a very important uh, sentence that was given to us here assume that, assume that the acceleration of the hammerhead is constant while in contact with the nail and moving downward. So what that means is that we can assume that the acceleration is constant the whole time which allows us to take advantage of constant acceleration kinematic equations. So what kind of kinematic equation could we use to get a net acceleration from this situation? Well, um, if you go through the list that you may have Remember, we have initial velocity, final velocity, and we have a distance. So that is setting us up to use this equation right here. Final velocity squared equals initial velocity squared plus 2 uh, times the acceleration times the change in y. The final velocity is 0, easy enough. Um, the initial velocity is that minus 3.2 meter per second value that we were given and we're squaring that uh, plus 2 times the acceleration times the change in y which is y final minus y initial or rather I'll kind of write that up here okay. y final minus y initial and what was that y final y initial Y final is 0, Y initial is 0 0.0045, so 0 minus 0 0.0045 meters. And what we'll do is we'll swing this bad boy onto the other side and make it positive, and we'll have 2 times the acceleration times uh, 0 0.0045 meters and now I can divide both sides by uh, the stuff on the left hand side that's attached to um, the acceleration and I can just solve for that right so divide both sides by 2 times 0 0.0045 meters 
And I'm going to do this the shortcut way. And do like that. So everything here on the left hand side would cancel out. And now we're taking uh, a is equal to a negative number squared, which becomes positive. And we're dividing this by another positive number. So a should be positive too. And it's 1,000. 137 uh, around 7.8 or 0.78 excuse me uh, meters per second squared and you might think if this hammer is falling downward why doesn't it have a negative acceleration well remember it's coming to a stop it's going from a negative initial velocity to a stop the only way in which we can make that happen is if we apply a positive acceleration to slow it, well, kind of slow it down in the negative direction, I guess, if you want to call it that, and make it become zero. So, uh, again, we're going to plug this value into this expression. This is the net acceleration experienced by the hammerhead as it moves down that vertical displacement. And so when you plug in all of these quantities here, so minus 4.9 newtons divided by 9.8 meter per second squared times this 1,137 value, okay, and then we're going to subtract off the weight, which we were given was 4.9 meters, or excuse me, newtons, forgive me, and then the applied force, minus 15 newtons. And this is equal to the force, the downward force, rather, of the hammerhead on the nail, which is what? I get negative 588.79 newtons. However, we have to be very careful and consider the amount of significant figures from the problem description. And if I look back, I see 2, I see 2, I see 2, and there's 2. So we have to answer part B with respect to two significant figures, and which means the cutoff comes right here. And since 8 is closer to 10, that means we have to round up. So approximately equal to negative, <clears throat> excuse me, negative 590 newtons. That is the answer to part B. Negative 590 newtons is the force of the hammerhead on the nail. So if I go back and take a look at part C, I mentioned before that we're going to do the exact same thing that we did in part B, except we're going to be changing the displacement and making it smaller. Everything else is going to stay the same. So we can expect that if everything is staying the same but it's coming to a stop in a shorter distance, there must be a bigger acceleration. So we, we definitely have to solve for that. However, the, um, the expression here, this one, if I kind of circle this in maybe like a light blue color, this one right here, that expression will stay the same. That will not change. We will still use the expression that I'm putting a bunch of blue stars next to in part C. We just need to recalculate the net acceleration. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll still use the same um, uh, expression, the same equation, except we're just going to change some of the numbers. So plus 2, a change in y. The final is still 0. Um, this is still 3.2 meter per second. Right? Nothing else is changing. That's squared. Uh, plus 2a. The final position will be 0, but now the initial position will be 0 
meters. Okay. Remember, we've got to change that from centimeters to meters. It's not useful as centimeters. Uh, again, the same tactic applies. We are going to take this negative value over here and throw it over onto the other side so that we can isolate the acceleration. So we'll get 2a uh, 0 0.0012 meters is equal to this initial velocity quantity squared. And if I divide both sides, I get the acceleration equal to what? I get 4,000. Well, let me not omit this last step. I'll include it just to be consistent here. We get minus 3.2 meter per second squared to times 0 0.0012 meters. Okay, for the sake of you know being a completionist, there we go. Everything is taken care of. Forgive me on that. That was a little misleading. Our acceleration is now higher, actually, like we expected. So uh, 4,266.67 meters per second squared is what I'm getting on my calculator. Now, remember, we're not going to round this. We're going to plug it into the other expression and then round that. So that means that the force of the hammerhead in part C is going to be equal to uh, we're, we'll still have this minus out in front. It's the weight ha doesn't change. That's still the same. Um, 9.8 meter per second squared, and I'm going to multiply this times this rather large number here. Uh, oh, <laughs> let's make a copy of it instead. There we go. Kind of, sort of, a little bit. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll work with that. So minus m a minus the weight, which was uh, 4.9 newtons, and then minus that 15 newton applied force. And what does the calculator say? I get minus 2,153.23 newtons. But if I round to two significant figures, we have a 5 here, which means we have to round up to the nearest 100 newtons. So I go back to black, and I say my answer for part C is approximately equal to minus 2,200 newtons. That is the answer to part C. The downward force exerted by the hammerhead on the nail, everything else staying the same except the distance getting smaller, it makes it hit significantly harder. And that is all there is for this problem. I hope this helped. Thanks for watching.